where we began. Um, Chandran reminded us earlier today that in 2004 we started with about 40 statements of intent that were signed by companies and organizations who were committed to create the round table on sustainable palm oil. And later in 2004, we registered RSPO as an association under Swiss civil law. We created then a criteria working group, which in only 12 months' time produced the principles and criteria. And then we launched into a two-year period of field trials, testing the principles and criteria, and developing the generic guidance, but also national interpretations for Malaysia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea to begin with. After which we then adopted in the RT in November 2007, the finalized PNC, the generic guidance, the three national interpretations, and the certification framework document. Where we are now, and these are data that I pulled from the RSPO website uh, two weeks ago, is 123 mills certified, which involves 28 companies, over 5 million tons of crude palm oil production capacity certified, and out of that comes 1.2 million tons of palm kernel oil, and in total that means that over 1 million hectare of plantations and estates have now been certified to the RSPO standard. As far as the markets are concerned, and other speakers will, will talk about this later, I make a distinction between three big chunks of the palm oil market. One is Europe, United States, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, where the demand for sustainability is fairly clearly articulated. So most of the players there are aware of RSPO, are aware of palm oil, um, they understand how the supply chain mechanisms work, although that is for some still a bit complicated. And that is where we have registered the trademark. The RSPO trademark is now registered in 60 countries, so actually more than just Europe and the United States. But uptake is slow. So what needs to happen there is we need to increase uptake, we need to speed it up. And there are a number of things that we will share with you during this conference that hopefully will help in doing that. Then we have China, and we'll have a presentation specifically about the situation in China, where awareness is growing. This is an 8 million, 9 million tons market. Um, and where the government of the People's Republic of China is going to be the decisive factor. So we need to carefully design the right engagement strategies and the right lobbying strategies to bring the market with us, to bring the industry with us, in order to allow the government to actually take that decision. And then we have the market in India, like China, a very price sensitive market where awareness is starting to grow. Um, again, we'll hear about India later, where it's the industry that really needs to be convinced that this is doable and where then eventually a government decision will also be necessary. One of the tools we are looking at, and we are looking at that not just for these markets but also in Europe, is to convince government to put up preferential tariff treatment for certified sustainable commodities, not just palm oil. But this could include coffee, this could include cane sugar, this could include soya. Because we think that governments should play a role here. We think that governments should facilitate the trade in and the uptake of certified sustainable commodities in global markets. This question was asked before, and Adam kindly provided an answer. Where will we be 10 years from now? I believe that sustainability will be mainstream. I believe that sustainability will be part of the license to operate across all commodities. And I believe that RSPO will then have become a market facilitator and a knowledge center for sustainable palm oil. And building on what Jonathan Porritt said, RSPO could become a center of innovation for palm oil. And it should also have become a global center for palm oil smallholder expertise which in many countries is the largest production base. I believe that average yields will have gone up, which will require replanting with new hybrids, which will require more access to good agricultural practices. And as it happens, what Minister Bernard Dompok said, six tons of oil equals 30 
tons of fresh fruit bunch with an oil extraction ratio of 20%. But I think that new plantings will have higher yields than that's closer to 10. Thank you very much for, this, for listening to this short introduction. And I'll go now back to the table to announce the next speaker.